social banking from GT Bank. Anywhere, anytime, any device. My name is Sangu Delhi. I am Chief Executive Officer of Golden Palm Investments um, and an entrepreneur. And we are in Accra, Ghana. Um, I grew up in a large family. Uh, my mother was one of eight, I was one of five, and my father was uh, part of a polygamous royal family in Nandom, so he was one of 86. Um, coming from family reunion, and you see how large the family is. Um, I also grew up in a bi-religious household, uh, where my father's Roman Catholic and my mother's Egyptian. Grew up in a Pan-African household, being a mix of Ghana, and Bekinabi, and Egyptian. Uh, went to schools in Ghana, went to Christ the King, then moved to Ghana International School, until I got a scholarship to attend the Petty School in New Jersey. From there, I then went on to Harvard University, where I studied African Studies and Economics. And then, beyond there, uh, went back to Harvard for graduate studies in uh, a Juris Doctor in Law and an MBA at Harvard Law School and Harvard Business School. I've always considered myself an entrepreneur. If I can go way back to class five, class six, I used to, there was a good friend of mine called Nia Mankwa, who used to uh, struggle a bit with homework. So I'd come early in the morning and I'd help him with homework in exchange for these corned beef sandwiches he used to have. Um, so uh, early on, I, I learned how to monetize intellect. Um, then fast forward, I think my first real brush with business though, was when I first came to the US um, on scholarship to Petty. At the time, after I, I, I got the, the Walter Annenberg scholarship, which covered everything, um, I still needed to get a ticket. So at the time I was at Ghana International School and I had all these study guides I had created and my books and notes for the O levels. So what I ended up doing was I marketed and sold those, um, mostly to the um, expat community. And I was able to make about $1,600 from, uh, from that operation. So I bought my one-way ticket with Alitalia. Um, you know, bought a few other things for winter and whatnot, and I had $500 in savings, which I took to the US. So that summer, right before school started, I found this website called bids.com, which was this discount site where you could, you know, allegedly order a Rolex worth $5,000 and you can bid on it, so you might be able to get it for $200, $300. And I was, I was just like, this is amazing, this is great. I kept bidding and I bid and spent the whole $500. And when all the stuff came, it was fake. So it was, it was, I was devastated, I was broke, and I had a whole bunch of fake jewelry. And that was my, uh, that was my first um, introduction into diligence and uh, stats and small. And, you know, I probably should have just ordered one thing, waited to see it come, check it out. And uh, so, so that was my first foray into business. I've always had a thesis on Africa for a long time. And, and that thesis is rooted in my personal upbringing here in Ghana. 50% interest rates back in the day, things were tough. But then you saw this evolution, you saw this period in which, you know, Africans across the board decided, look, we're going to mature our democracies. We, we largely had political stability and we had an emergence of a consuming and middle class. And, and the bedrock of stability has led to this emergence of growth and opportunity. So seeing that, seeing the demographics in which you know, we're going to have the youngest population globally by 2030, I saw all these different things happening and I realized that no, this is the last frontier. And that's why when I originally went to Harvard, I was actually pre-med, like every good African boy, I was gonna be a doctor. Um, but I quickly decided that there was more merit to study in Africa. So I studied African studies and economics, focused on opportunities and development. So my, when I first got to Harvard, I started a nonprofit actually called the African Development Initiative, now Clean Aqua, and started doing sustainable development projects. All the, the, you know, underlying all of this was this still entrepreneurial bug. I'm in a village called Ejemante in Ghana, working with the community, trying to get them clean water and sanitation. And we have a community meeting. And I ask everyone, if I had a World Bank budget, and there was a single thing you could do, 
you know, that I could do for you? What would it be? And I thought, you know, someone would say, look, share $1,000 to everyone in the village, or I probably would have asked for money. Um, it, it was quite unanimous where they said, look, we want jobs. People want to be economically empowered. And so that's, that really set off, this was 2007, it just set off um, a philosophical change in my mind where I realized that maybe we're going about this the wrong way. And that the way we need to liberate the, the continent is not through these handouts and charity, it is through economically empowering people so they're in charge of their own dignity. Um, first head of was just convincing people that you can actually do business in Africa. And then was able to raise some capital, our first capital raise of $50,000. We did corn farming in our front plains, a thousand acres, mechanized farming with imported tractors. And, and it, was, it was a great success. So Golden Palm is actually involved in a number of different sectors, all of which we identify as being high growth. Um, one is agriculture, as I mentioned. Agriculture was the first thing we did. Um, we're in, involved in aquaculture, where if you look at, and in general, when you look at agriculture, you, you have what I call um, a, a, a a pretty tragic situation on the continent where we have 60% of the world's arable land. Yet we don't feed ourselves. We're a net importer of food, food that we can grow on our own land. And so there's an import substitution thesis here that says that we should be able to grow and get involved in our own production, not just the production of food, but also the processing, because you want value add. And so, you know, we're involved in aquaculture, uh, we're involved in agro-processing of uh, baby food and gluten-free flour through Stawi in Kenya. Just a few days ago, I was in Lagos launching Stawi Nigeria. We're going to expand Stawi to Nigeria. Um, we're also going to you know, expand Stawi to Ghana in the near future. And the idea is promoting this intra-Africa trade, intra-Africa investments, and creating a Pan-African platform. How can we take what we see in Kenya and expand it to Nigeria, take what we learn in Nigeria, expand it to Ghana, and vice versa? So that's in agriculture. We're looking at, um, actually, in uh, JAWS, um, I just, um, one of the deals I'm looking at is potentially going into processing in JAWS. Because my, my thesis on um, the nonsense going on is uh, we need to address that not just politically, but we need to address that we create an economic empowerment. Because political instability, terrorism and all those things breed where there's poverty. And if we solve poverty, we'll be able to solve a lot of these political issues. So we're, you know, we're, we're looking at a number of opportunities there in Nigeria. You know, I, I'll never forget when I was a young kid, I was uh, about, I learned how to read early, about two, three. I was about five, six years old when I got a journal from my father from the Harvard School of Public Health. So I saw Harvard University and I said, what's university? And my dad said, oh, that's where you go to get smart. I said, and what's Harvard? He said, oh, that's where you go to get really smart. I said, oh, I want to go. So I wrote a letter to the headmaster of Harvard because I didn't know it was called president. I was only a child. So I said, dear headmaster of Harvard, my father says this is where you go to get really smart. I know I'm smart, but I want to get really smart. So when can I start? Six, seven months later, I get mail. Six-year-olds don't get mail. So everyone was like, well, who is sending me mail? And lo and behold, it was Neil Rudenstein, who I got a letter um, you know, from Harvard saying, you know, you're too young, but you know, stay in touch. They send me some Harvard paraphernalia. I want to go to Harvard. And I had this dream from since I was a kid. And people kept telling me, it won't happen. Do you know how many people apply? You're not going to get in. In fact, a European ambassador called me into his office and told me, and I quote, it is young and foolish for an African boy like you to think you get into Harvard. Even my own daughter won't dream of getting into Harvard. And told me that instead, he knows I'm a sharp boy. He'll try and use his links to see if he can get me into some of the good schools in his country. And I remember being devastated and thinking, why can't, because I'm sitting here in Africa, that means I too can't go to Harvard. And now look, by God's grace, we are getting three degrees from Harvard. In a, con in a continent that's promising, you're challenging. The advice I have for young entrepreneurs are a number. One is, I always believe that the only way you can succeed anywhere in the world, and especially here, is passion. You need passion to be able to sustain you know, we're supposed to have met several hours ago and we're stuck in traffic for two, three hours. You need passion to be able to, to go through all of this. You need passion to be able to go through, you know, things being wrong, their power being out, 
the you know government bureaucracy frustrating you, um, you know police asking for bribes and all sorts of things that you go through, which is business as usual on the continent. You need to be driven by something bigger than you, something that takes you beyond all these things. And that's the passion and that's dreams, having dreams. Dreams is the X on the map and hard work is the fuel to get you there. I want an Africa that is owned, built, championed and driven by Africans. And until then, our freedom is empty. Hi guys, if you just enjoyed watching that video and you want to stay up to date with the latest in entertainment, lifestyle and more from inside Africa, why don't you hit the subscribe button right now? And if you want to keep on watching videos, then just simply hit the more videos button.